The constant tit-for-tat of the U.S.-led coalition and the pro-Iranian Houthi forces is continuing to create fierce waves in the Red Sea. In the early morning of February 25th, Vietnam time, the U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM, and the British Armed Forces with support from countries such as Australia, Bahrain, Canada, Denmark, the Netherlands, and New Zealand, launched a attack 18 targets of Yemen's Houthi forces. The targets of this multinational effort include underground weapons storage facilities, missile storage facilities, one-way attack drone systems, air defense systems, radars, and helicopters. Houthis CENTCOM emphasized that eliminating Houthi capabilities used to threaten U.S. and partner forces in the Red Sea and surrounding waterways is aimed at protecting the U.S. and its partners and allies of America and the region and restore freedom of navigation. According to CENTCOM, illegal Houthi attacks have disrupted humanitarian aid to Yemen, harmed the Middle East, and caused environmental damage. These attacks are separate and distinct from the multinational freedom of navigation operations conducted during Operation Guardian of Prosperity. On the same day, the British Ministry of Defense announced that four Typhoon fighter jets of the British Royal Air Force, supported by two Voyager aerial tanker aircraft, participated in the coalition's attack. This is the second consecutive day that the U.S. and its allies have conducted airstrikes on Yemen. Previously, on February 23rd, they also conducted three bombardments on Hodeida province, one of the localities that Houthi is controlling next to Yemen's capital Sana'a. In response, Houthi spokesman Yahya Sarias said that this force carried out a military operation to attack the U.S. ship Torm 4 in the Gulf of Aden using several anti-ship missiles. The Houthis also carried out a drone attack, UAV, on several U.S. military ships in the Red Sea. The UK Maritime Trade Operations Office UKMTO, of the British Navy also reported a Houthi attack on British and American ships in the Gulf of Aden, 70 nautical miles east of the port of Djibouti. UKMTO did not disclose details. Meanwhile, CENTCOM said the guided missile destroyer USS Mason on February 24 successfully intercepted an anti-ship ballistic missile launched into the Gulf of Aden from Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen and likely targeting the tanker Torm 4. According to CENTCOM, both the USS Mason and the MV Torm 4 were undamaged and there were no injuries. These fierce waves in the Red Sea are exacerbating a global shortage of tankers, as the industry has long warned that too few new ships are being built. This causes a trend of shifting the form of petroleum transactions globally. In 2023, due to the organization of petroleum exporting countries, OPEC, and allied countries, also known as OPEC Plus, cutting production, the amount of oil transported will not be high, leading to an unexplored shortage in the number of oil tankers. Highway. At the same time, the energy transition is intensifying, meaning a phased-out fossil fuel future is approaching, clouding the outlook for the oil and gas industry in the long term. But since November 2023, when Houthi forces in Yemen began attacking container ships passing through the Red Sea region, many ship owners were forced to look for longer alternative routes. In this context, the lack of new transport capacity becomes more evident, increasing freight prices and longer journey times. According to OPEC statistics, in 2024, only two new super tankers will join the world oil tanker fleet. This is the smallest number of additional ships in nearly four decades for the global oil industry, up to 90% lower than the average for this millennium. Data from research company Banchero Costa shows that by 2025, only five new ships are expected to join the global tanker fleet. This number is much lower than the number of 42 new ships delivered in 2022. Although the number of new ship orders has recently increased, it will take many years for shipyards to meet them all. Orders signed during the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as orders for liquefied natural gas LNG, tankers. Mr. Enrico Paglia, senior researcher at Banchero Costa, a shipping services company, said that the situation in the oil tanker market is very tense, especially for crude oil tankers. Assessing the prospects of this industry in the coming time, the expert emphasized, it will be even more stressful in the future. The oil tanker market exploded in 2020, as demand for the commodity continued to increase, causing oil traders to search for every ship capable of storing oil at sea. 
but OPEC's production cuts have led to a decline in tanker activity. By 2022, global oil flows began to be altered after the Russia-Ukraine conflict began. Shipments to Europe that once took days across the Baltic Sea now take weeks to reach other parts of the world. Recent disruptions in the Red Sea have exacerbated the problem, adding to shipping times. According to expert Focios Katsilas, principal analyst of tanker shipping services at SNC Global Commodity Insights, the vessel recruitment rate, a measure of the level of utilization of the tanker fleet at any given time, has increased to 5% since ships started avoiding the Red Sea. He shared that the crisis in the Red Sea is changing the fundamentals in the market and it is benefiting ship operators. Meanwhile, Mr. Alexander Savories, Chief Executive Officer, CEO, of UNFNB, one of the world's largest oil transportation companies, said the diversion effect is being observed every day in shipping operations in general. General and transporting crude oil and oil products in particular. According to him, the combination of two new ships and a fleet of older ships brings positive prospects for oil tanker shipping businesses.